everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. You just got to quit tripping while you're in the process because the process is necessary. You may not see it now, but when he gets you on the other side of it, you're going to see exactly why it went that way. And you're going to be okay with it. But quit tripping during the process. Discouragement can creep in secretly. Hide behind clothes, makeup, hairdos. Discouragement is so bold that it will even hide behind a smile. It will always ride to work with you. And if it doesn't catch a ride going to work, it'll catch a ride on the way back home. If you listen at discouragement, it will cause you to make bad decisions. It will cause you to think that life is not worth living. And secretly behind the facade of a smile and a good morning and a praise the Lord and a how are you, you will wonder if you're ever going to get out of what you're into. Oh Lord, why me? You ain't the only one. Oh Lord, why me? You ain't the only one. Oh Lord, why I lose my job? You ain't the only one unemployed. Oh Lord, why he leave me? You ain't the first shit got left. This might, this might not even be your last time getting left. Pull yourself together and quit tripping cause you in the process. Could it be possible that God has allowed you to face and confront certain things so that he could use you to be a blessing in somebody else's life. Could it be possible that your destiny incorporates the place of your agony? That God wants to use you in the very area that you have had the greatest pain and the greatest turmoil? Could it be possible that the passion that is necessary to be effective is derived from a personal malady that gave you the deep well. I've noticed that anybody I've ever met who was greatly anointed and, and had a deep well through which they were able to change lives, they also had a deep experience which was the catalyst to give them the motivation to drive over all the obstacles that would deter you from destiny and give you the power to, as I like to say, take a licking and keep on ticking because you are driven by more than finances, more than money. You are driven by a personal experience and an encounter with God. God is processing you. He ain't through with you. If he was through with you, you would not wake up in the morning. He gonna fix it. Everything is wrong. First of all, let me tell you this right here. Why are you tripping? I look back on my life and all that I've been through. So the stuff I'm currently going through, I have built up enough reservoir that living in the car taught me that this ain't it. So the things I'm going through now, I know this ain't it. That he gonna come get me in a minute. So all I gotta do is sit tight. I ain't in a bad place. Now I ain't where I wanna be, but the spot I'm in is better than where I was. I ain't homeless. So what I'm going through right now, y'all don't know, I got some challenges. People think when you get famous or rich that your problems is over. Oh, they got a whole new set of them for you. They got some stuff you ain't seen. Biggie wrote a song saying one time, more, more, more money, more problems. I, I got to tell you something, that boy would never lie. But I'll tell you the truth right now. The problems I got right now, I take them. Because the problems I had when I was homeless, I don't know. You've gone through the mess. You've been through the, through the test and the trials and the pain and the ostracization and the criticisms and the heartache and the dilemma or the divorce or the confusion or the mental chaos or the emotional mayhem that is necessary to make you an expert. You graduated from the School of Hard Knocks. When you come from a place like that, you have power like you would not be believed. You have power to withstand obstacles. You are not easily deterred, discouraged. You don't fall back. You don't lapse into depression. You rise up out of, out of a hellhole with a fresh determination to be used by God like you have never been used before. Don't make a permanent decision over a temporary circumstance. Don't allow 
a moment of agony to make you draw a conclusion about life prematurely. Because if you just keep on walking with God, God has a way of making everything all right. But he warns us and declares to us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Steps. Now, the term steps implies process. It means it's going to take a while. It means that you can't get to the destination just because you want it. Just because you saw it. Just because you like it. Just because you need it. Life was designed to do this one. not reap a harvest in the fall because we need it. We reap a harvest in the fall because we deserve it. Not necessarily from a moral standpoint. Of course, there are some moral laws as well, spiritual and moral laws. But just the basic laws that simply say, if you wish to reap, you must plant. So jot this down. Reaping is reserved for the planters. And the reason they reap is because they deserve it. They're the planters. They deserve to reap. Interesting Bible phrase that says, if, if you keep knocking, you'll find open doors. Good phrase to jot down. If you keep knocking, you'll find open doors. Doors of opportunity. Doors of a chance to meet someone. Doors open for association. Doors open to find someone special. Doors open to find a, a unique business colleague. If you keep knocking, doors of opportunity are open to those who continually knock. So we don't find open doors of opportunity because we need them. We find them because we deserve them. Only those who knock deserve to find an open. But the promise is, if you continually knock, you'll find doors of opportunity. It says, if you search, you will find. In fact, we are often tormented by vision. We are tormented by vision. It's a painful thing to be a visionary. Because the visionary sees what shall be and wakes up to deal with what is. Sometimes the visionary cries out on the inside and says, God don't even show me what shall be. Because every time I shout and dance over what you showed me, I go home to a harsh and painful, bleak, dark reality and the fact that I am torn between what shall be and what is creates agony in my life. The Bible said hope deferred makes the heart sick. Oh, and now, now I'm not happy doing what I used to be happy doing because I'm tormented by what shall be. I want to hasten my process so that I can get to an expected end, but that cannot be done. Because a blessing given to the children is not a blessing at all. I can give my son the car keys now, tell him to go to the store. But had I given it to him when he was five, it would not have been a blessing at all. Same car, same son, given to soon. He can't handle it. The car can handle it. The road can handle it. I can give it to you, but can't handle it. So would I be a good father if I gave him a good thing to do so? Sometimes my goodness is proven by my ability to say not yet. If we get what is ours too soon, we cannot handle it. I remember Mother Teresa saying something that really grabbed me. She said, just when I thought I had a handle on life, I had a handle on life. That the same thing that should make us praise the Father will drive us away from the Father if we get it too soon. My prayer has always been, Lord, don't give me more than I can handle. You know when to bless me. You know how to bless me. You know when I'm ready to be blessed. Teach me patience with the process. Go through the process. 
God has ordered the steps. It, it helps me to understand that I am not wandering aimlessly, that I'm not just moving on my own, that there is a course for me to take, and that I can't graduate till I take it, that there is a path for me to trod, that God isn't making this thing up as he goes. I pray to abort the process. I pray to speed it up. I pray to get out of things that he wanted me to stay into. I pray that I wouldn't have to endure some things that he wanted me to endure. I, I was working on the destination, but he was working on me. And, and sometimes he made me wait. He, he made me slow down and said, no, you skipped that step. Go back. Because all of these are tools that I'm using to work on you. I'm not preparing the blessing for you. I'm preparing you for the blessing. The blessing is already prepared. Oh my God. The blessing is already prepared. Eyes have not seen. Ears have not heard. Neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for them that love it. Did, did you know your blessing is already ready? That is that is already in place that God isn't fixing it up right now it's already done that the work doesn't have to be applied to where you're going the work has to be applied to you so that when you get where you're going you can handle what you gotta handle and oh so God help me preach the steps the steps the steps touch three people and say the steps the steps the steps it is my sickness that makes my healing. It is my poverty that illuminates my prosperity, makes me appreciate where I am right now. You don't notice good health till you've been sick. You don't even notice it. You don't even understand the words that are coming out of my mouth until you have been sick. You will never thank God for feeling good until you felt bad. You'll never thank God for your back, for your neck, for your head, for your kidneys, for your liver, until it's been challenged. But after a while, you start thanking God for crazy stuff. Thank you, because I can see this morning. Praise Him on the steps. Don't wait till you get to the stage. Don't wait till you get finished. Don't wait till everything is in order. But every now and then, you ought to stop right in the middle of the step and say, Lord, I thank you. I'm not where I'm going to be. But I'm glad I'm not where I used to be. Lord, I thank you. Is there anybody in here that's praising God on the steps? I'm not there yet. I'm not finished yet. I haven't arrived yet. But when you see me praising God, I'm praising him on the steps. Somebody praise him on the steps.